Hello everyone. Welcome to the classification of hotels part 7. In the last video we had discussed about various FNB service and food production related facilities and criteria necessary for various categories of hotel. Well, no matter how good are the services, equipments or maybe the dishes, the real deal is the staff and it's the staff that makes the magic happen. In this video, we are going to discuss about the staff, the staff welfare facilities and very importantly, the code of conduct for safe, honorable and sustainable tourism. Regarding the staff, we are going to talk about the staff uniform, the communication capability of the staff, especially in English, percentage of supervisory staff and percentage of skilled staff. As someone said, the first impression is the last impression. And indeed, it's the uniform that makes a very positive first impression of a staff. So it has been made necessary for all star category hotels to provide uniform to their staff, which are coming in guest contact or they are called as the front of the house staff. A guest who can be a tourist, a traveler, an excursionist can visit the hotel from any part of the world. And as a matter of fact, English is such a language that is widely spoken across the globe. So it has been made mandatory, necessary for three star, four star, five star and five star deluxe hotel to hire employees that can speak fluent English. However, one and two star hotels are relaxed in this category to some extent. The percentage of supervisory staff. Every hotel requires skillful head of departments and these are the people who run the department. They must have a degree or diploma from a reputed hospitality school an Institute of Hotel Management affiliated to National Council and FCI or an equivalent. The percentage of supervisory staff for one star hotel is 20%, two star hotel is 20%, three and four star hotel is 40% each and five to five star deluxe hotel is 80%. Well, to provide efficient service, and to create magic and a wow factor, it requires skills. So the percentage of skilled staff has to be 20% for one and two star hotel, 30% for four and three star hotel, and for five star, five star deluxe hotel, it has to be 60%. And this training certificate should be under the guidelines of the Ministry of Tourism. For efficient working, staff also requires some facilities. So under the staff welfare facilities, we are going to talk about the rooms for staff to rest. There are break shifts in a hotel and if the staff requires to rest, there must be some facility available for the staffs to rest in the hotel. The lockers that has to be given to the staff, the toilet facilities and of course, if during the uh, shift the staff do have the facility of food so there must be a separate dining area and facility for the staff so we are going to talk about all these in detail in this section there is a shift called as a break shift in which the staff has to work for a certain number of hours and then it is allowed to rest for a certain number of hours and then get back to the work and after effective uh, working out number of hours they are allowed to leave for such shifts, there must be rooms for the staff to rest. It's desirable for one and two star hotels to have rooms for the staff to rest. However, it is mandatory for three star, four star, five star and five star deluxe hotels to have such rooms. Now, point to be noted here is that the rooms will be separate for male and female staff and will be fitted with bunk beds as shown in this picture. When the staff comes to the hotel, they require some place to keep their belongings. So, 
At this time, the staff locker rooms comes in handy. It's desirable for one and two star hotels to have staff locker rooms. However, it is necessary for three star, four star, five star and five star deluxe hotels to have these rooms so that the staff can keep their belongings and in the beginning of the shift and can take it them away while leaving from the shift. We have discussed this earlier that there, the hotel is divided effectively into two parts, the front of the house and the back of the house. Front of the house is concerned with only the guests. So the toilet that are in the front of the house are only for the guests. So the staff also requires the same facility. So it's necessary for all categories of hotels applying or already classified under the star category to have toilet facilities, separate toilet facilities for male and female staff. The staff of the hotel also gets their tea breaks and meal breaks. And they're not allowed to have meals in the restaurants or anywhere in the back of the house itself. So there are separate dining areas meant to cater to the needs of the staff. Now it's desirable for one and two star hotels to have the separate dining area. However, it's necessary for three star, four star, five star and five star deluxe hotels to provide them with this service so that they can have their meals and break at, in the uh, dining area. Regarding the code of conduct, we are going to talk about the display of pledge, the training of code of conduct, the maintenance of action taken report and focal points and nodal officers. So now we are talking about ethics in the operations. So it is necessary for all category of hotels applying or already approved under the star classification to display a pledge of safe and honorable tourism prominently in the back of the house where the staff can look at it and the offices of all HODs, which is the head of departments. The code of conduct is subjected to training. So it's necessary for all star category hotels to provide training to their employees at the time of orientation and subsequently a refresher training during the operations. Everyone from top to bottom have to follow the code of conduct for safe and honorable tourism and ethics in operations. An action can be taken against a person for non-compliance to these code of conducts and for that matter it's necessary for all category of hotels to maintain an action taken report signed by a signatory which is authorized to do so for hotels uh, which have more than 25 employees there has to be two nodal officers who will be elected or nominated from HRD or security etc for the uh, maintaining the compliance to code of conduct and people who feel that some somehow these code of conducts have been broken so they can be reported only to these people for hotels which have less than 25 employees it's necessary to have one nodal officer so it's necessary from one star to five star deluxe hotels to maintain these uh, focal points or the nodal officer in case of non-compliance of code of conduct or to check the maintenance of records. Well, that's all for part seven of classification of hotels in the next video, which will be the part eight. We'll be talking about guest services, safety and security, communication facility and eco-friendly practices followed in star category hotels. Till then, stay safe.